What's up guys? This is Ironhide X coming back to you now with another guide. Um, this is my guide on destroyers. Uh, this is mainly for IGN Japanese destroyers, but um, a lot of it could, uh, I think it also work for the Americans. Um, the big difference between the two is the Americans, you want to use your guns a lot. Uh, and with the Japanese, I try to use my guns as much as I can. Um, if I'm in a spotting range. So anyways, um, on to the guide. I think with Japanese destroyers, there's two ways to play them. What I call the ambush destroyer, which is the video you're watching right now. Uh, this is me getting up close and personal and ambushing the fuck out of ships. And just uh, high risk, high reward type of play. Uh, the second way to play Japanese destroyers is what I like to call the fleet destroyer. Where you'll um, travel with the fleet, aerial denial, um, long range shots and whatnot. Now this right here, this is ambush style play. This is in my Minkazi. This is actually my very first game in the Minkazi. And um, I went, I decided to do an ambush style of play here because uh, I was completely sock and I only had the 7 kilometer torpedoes. So, some of the things to, be, to do with in DDs. Stay out of sniper view. Number uno. Dodging shots is really, really easy to do in a destroyer. And um, being situational aware is critically important. And especially with the lower tier uh, destroyers, pretty much with the Minkazi and down, spam the hell out of these torpedoes. You, you only got like a 30, 35, 40 second reload, I think, which goes quicker than you think. So really, shoot the heck out of these things. Um, I, I launch the hell out of them. I, I, whether I have a target, don't have a target, where I think they'll be at, it, it didn't really cost you anything. So really shoot the heck out of these things. Uh, some of the important information you need to know. You need to know the spotting range of your destroyer. Like the Minkazi here has a 5.9 kilometer spotting range. Mine's a little better because I have camo on it, but for all intents and purposes, I just say 5.9 is my spot range. Um, Obviously, when you play as an ambush style of play, you, uh, you're you going to be getting in close and whatnot every now and then. Um, I have great success closing with any kind of ship in the game other than American destroyers. You have to be very careful with them because they are maneuverable enough to avoid your torpedoes and uh, their guns can really rip you apart. So, in, in fire, I, I like to fire off torpedoes at multiple ships at once. Um, when you shoot at one guy, he tends to be more aware of torpedoes for the rest of the match. So just firing him off at different targets, I, I like doing that. Um, that it, I'm using the enemy destroyer smoke here. Unfortunately, the Omaha saw me coming into it. But um, this is why you don't stop in DD in a DD alley trap. Because um, that's bad news. Uh, just be really aware, guys. Whenever you see torpedoes coming at you like that, important, don't panic. Um, it's not always a good idea to immediately turn. Make sure you see where the torpedoes are coming and how you need, what you need to do to evade them. Sometimes just staying straight, straight on on the course that you're on is the best way to avoid them. And that knee-jerk reaction of just wanting to instantly turn your ship is not the right thing to do. Now, as you see, I'm massively outnumbered. Oh, look at this one. Pro dodge. Pro dodge. Get wrecked. Get wrecked, son. Yeah, you see those mad skills? Those are mad skills. Yeah. And dang it, sneaky island. Man, it's creeped up on me like that. I, the, the islands are the most sneaky thing in the game for me. I swear. Uh, this is really dangerous. Right here, I'm in a bad spot. I thought I was going to die, but thankfully, the enemies couldn't shoot. Uh, so I let off my salvo, and then I want to blade myself to present as small a target as possible. Um, and then get the heck out of dodge. And hammer down. Yeah, he's taking it. He likes it. So I'm reloading. I gotta get out of here. This is the, uh, the Japanese uh, gun traverse. I, when I turn my ship, actually, I can't fire my guns. Quick salvo, back out of sniper view to dodge shots. Always be in a situation where you wear. 
trying to dodge as much incoming fire as you can. And again, just letting off, letting off torpedoes, just letting them off where I think the enemy will be at. Um, the guideline is helpful, but it's not, it's not a win all type of thing. Um, sometimes you just got to shoot for the moon, you know, and you'll be surprised how many times you'll hit stuff, especially in a target rich environment like this, when there's a million ships shooting at you and you're outnumbered, just banging those torpedoes. You'll be surprised how many times you get, uh, you get hits. More hits. Yeah. Scrape and paint with torpedoes. That's how I roll. And now I know I'm I know I'm I'm pretty much a dead duck here, so I wanna try to get off one more salvo of corpse before I go. Get off one more salvo. Like I said, this is high risk, high reward. High risk, high reward. Um, when you play as like an ambush DD, it's it's risky, but it can be really well. It can be worth. You can do quite a lot of damage, and um, people just don't react very well when they see torpedoes just pop up. They they freeze up or turn the wrong way or or whatever. And so that's the end of, of my ambush style of, uh, of play there. Like it use the heck out of the islands, guys. Make sure you have six cents so you can see when you're spotted. Know your spotting range. Be situationally aware. Um, pay attention to incoming torpedoes. Um, and real quick, let's look at the results. Now, I died there. I only got one kill. But I put a lot of torpedoes into them before I went. Unfortunately, this was not a win. Um, let's look at the results. So, as you saw in that last one, we ended up with 105,000 damage as an ambush DD. Uh, my first game in the Minkazi went pretty well. Uh, now, in this example, I am playing, as I like to say, a fleet DD. With a fleet DD, the big difference is I really use my camo and uh, the long range of the Japanese torpedoes to sit there and just constantly shoot out torpedoes focusing on aerial denial and assisting my fleet. Um, when you're traveling with battleships and cruisers and whatnot and you launch enemy torps at the enemy ships, even if they don't hit, you're gonna have you're gonna cause them to uh, to be forced to maneuver. And when they are forced to maneuver, they're not shooting at your team. Uh, so anything you, you know that, that ends up helping your team quite a bit actually. Um, my plan was to come over here and cap this cap. I, I popped my uh, boost and everything to get over here quick. Unfortunately, the enemy got here quicker than I thought they would, so I wasn't able to um, to cap it out. But my plan was to cap this out and then play as a fleet PD and stay with my fleet and constantly keep knocking off these torpedoes. Um, I got sick of waiting, so I wanted to pop out and see what I see. Our team is taking the lead. Uh, again, as a fleet carrier, again, just popping off the torpedoes as much as I can. Um, I don't know if he's going to turn or not, so we put out a full shot. Hopefully he will, and I'll get a hit or not. Uh, again, with the most important thing when you play as a fleet carrier is just, um, like I said in the earlier video, know your destroyer's camo value, and know your aircraft detection range, and know your torpedo range. Um, if an enemy ship is selling away from you, and you have, let's say, a 10 kilometer torpedo range, and he's at eight kilometers when you launch your torpedoes. Um, even though he's within the 10, by the time the torpedoes get to target, he won't be. Uh, so don't bother launching at a, at a ship that's that's steaming away from you. That'll just be out of your torpedo range. Uh, one of the big benefits when you are playing as a fleet destroyer is that they're often distracted by your fleet. And so you can... Um, They'll be focused on shooting, and they and you can often alpha strike down with torpedoes and whatnot because they're paying attention to shooting. Um, most a lot of EB drivers and cruisers they just like to just sell along, and and that's just prime B for you as a destroyer. 
Again, constantly scanning, constantly checking the ranges. 5.9 is my detection range, so I can't let them get closer than that. If they get closer, I can get spotted, and if they're smart, everything they have will shoot at me while I'm lit. So staying out of that detection range is very important, and doing as much damage as you possibly can. Um, like I said in the ambush video, I like to cycle my targets. I like to, uh, you know, shoot this guy, then this guy, and then this guy, and then this guy. Uh, because once you shoot at a guy, he tends to be more aware of torpedoes for the rest of the game. And so if I can do quite a bit of damage to one, um, you know, it's good for my team. So, again, staying with the fleet, trying to remain unlit while shooting as much torpedoes as I possibly can. Um, the differences between the, the American destroyers and the Japanese mainly is, is the range on the torpedoes until you get to tier 9 and 10 anyways, and the detection range. Uh, that's the, the, the Japanese are all about stealth. Once you start playing in the higher tiers, it'll be harder and harder to play as an ambush de destroyer at close range with Japanese uh, destroyers, and it gets easier and easier to play as a fleet DD. Um, what I normally do in most matches uh, is I actually do play. I like to start off the match playing as a fleet DD and just shooting off torpedoes with my fleet and aerial denial and working on um, just trying to get big hits on battleships and whatnot. And then as the game progresses, then I tend to move in and look for opportunity targets at close range. And I was going to do, um, my next guy was going to be a cruiser guide, but I decided, you know what, I wanted to play some destroyers because they look, there really are a lot of fun. They're a lot of fun to play them. See my torpedoes about to smack into that Fuso over there. He's one of my prime targets. All four of the uh, torpedoes that I sent over to him hit. So good for, good for us. And yet, yeah, that's really all there is to it as a, as a fleet destroyer. Um, you'll end up having a higher hit rate with your torpedoes with practice. Um, as far as launching, you got the guideline. If I am cycling targets, I will. Um, I, I'll, I use the guideline kind of as a reference, and then, which like that that uh, BB I just launched at, I thought he would turn away since he was already kind of heading that direction, so I launched behind him so that the uh, when he started to turn away, um, the other torpedoes would slam in. And uh, just just torpedo shooting in general, you'll just you'll get better with practice. Here we go, some more hits. And the more damage you can pump out for your for your fleet here and, and give them those easy targets to finish off, the better. Alright, so there there's a fleet carrier. Um, I can't really think of anything else to, to to tips and tricks. It's just all about using your um, your camo. Um, as far as smoke. I use smoke really only as a defensive measure. I only pop smoke when I know I'm close and I'm going to get shot at and I need to get away. Um, that's the only time I really use smoke or to cover uh, friendly ships. And that BB I just torped, ended up going down with flooding. Uh, so yeah, I, I like to... Uh, use smoke just as a defensive thing and also to screen um, you could put smoke in front of some of your battleships and then they can shoot from the cover of your smoke and I'll do that quite a bit as well um, just make sure that if you're playing as a fleet carrier and you do do that and you put out the smoke that you stay in front of the smoke and spot them because if y'all all stay behind the smoke and no one's spotting then all you did was just give a pause in action um, so don't do that uh, anyway, any questions, concerns, comments, anything like that, please uh, comment, subscribe, check out my channel. Um, I've got numerous other guides on there. And I will see you next time. This is Ironhide X.
Uh, real quick. So, one other quick thing is that if you happen to see a hold on the enemy's lines and they have some juicy aircraft carriers sitting in the back, by all means take advantage of that because carriers are kind of like the scumbags of World of Warships and they deserve no mercy at all. They deserve no uh, no mercy whatsoever. And so I snuck back all the way in the back of this team and oh god, I'm in a tier 4 my Isokazi and I see this tier 6 carrier sitting there <laughs> with his cruiser guardian. <laughs> the, the cruiser, you did a great job! <laughs> yeah. If you saw on my gun site earlier, they're both just parked right next to each other. <laughs> it's, it was glorious. I I enjoy killing carriers more than anything else. I even tell them in chat, yeah, I caught you slipping. I caught you slipping good. And now you're about to take the D. Yep. Oh. Yep. Yep. There we go. Oh. I, that's a shame that the carrier dies. And that, that breaks my heart. I, I feel like a very bad man. That's that's for all the times you freaking drop on me at 0 0.5 kilometers in my battleship, you freaking carriers. Um, I, all you carrier drivers, anybody happens to see this video, this, that, this part right here was just for you. That um, It gives me great satisfaction when I can ruin your games like that. I love it. Okay, Fahrenheit X, signing out.